Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video, I'd like to discuss about something that may be a little bit confusing, and it's an acronym. It's called CTD-ILD. This stands for Connective Tissue Disease Associated Interstitial Lung Disease. What? That's a mouthful. I, 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 I accept that. But basically, it's one of these acronyms that doctors use, especially in the field of interstitial lung diseases, which are conditions affecting the structure of the lung, uh, the the lung tissue itself that becomes a little bit thickened, hardened, and then we call that interstitial lung disease, that disease that affects the lungs. But then this CTD, connective tissue disease acronym, the, the, part, the part at the beginning, just suggests that the reason for the disease in the lungs is another condition, which is this connective tissue disease. Now, connective tissue diseases may sound a little bit complicated, but let's think about the fact that all organs of the body contain cells, and these cells are supported by tissue that surrounds the cells, different proteins such as collagen, for example, or elastin, that support basically these cells, they create a structure that forms an organ, such as a bone, such as a joint, such as the lungs the kidneys, etc. They all have connective tissue within them. This is what it just means. Connective tissue, connecting the cells together into a structure that makes sense. Now, diseases that affect this tissue that can be present in different parts of the body, in different organs, are called connective tissue diseases, obviously. So if you're following so far, I think we are already getting very close to understanding what connective tissue disease associated interstitial lung disease is. So basically, if you have a condition that affects the connective tissue, it may affect different organs of the body because the tissues that form this connective tissue are the same. We have the same proteins. So if there is, for example, an autoimmune condition where your immune system goes a bit into overdrive, it produces some antibodies, some proteins that are directed against healthy bits of disconnective tissue disease, against healthy tissues. It's possible that the immune system may recognize parts of the body that contain this specific protein that binds to that antibody secreted by the immune system, and then that causes a disease. The immune system affects organs that contain a certain protein. So this may seem very, very complicated, but in reality, if your immune system is producing an attack against its own tissues, it may very well be affect the connective tissue, which is the structure for all organs. And when it affects the organs as a whole and including the lungs, you may get lung disease as well. So this is basically connective tissue disease associated with interstitial lung disease mouthful. But basically, once we've understood this, we can imagine that there may be many conditions in which this can happen. So let's start, for example, with things like rheumatoid arthritis, which is a condition that mostly affects the joints. But we do know that it can affect the lungs as well. And in that case, we may call it rheumatoid arthritis associated interstitial lung disease, if it affects the lungs as well. Or we may have systemic sclerosis, which is another condition in which different parts of the body become hardened, the skin may become thickened, um, there may be difficulty swallowing food because the esophagus becomes a bit harder than hardened and thickened. So when those conditions become overt, they affect the various organs of the body, they may include the lungs as well, and they may cause this hardening in tissues such as the lung. So this is connective tissue disease. It's an umbrella term that refers to situations in which generally there is an autoimmune condition where the body's immune system, the normal immune system that protects us against infection and other things, attacks our own healthy tissues by the pro via the production of certain antibodies or proteins that bind to certain healthy tissues. And there can be hundreds of these antibodies, literally, that can be produced. There are a few which are more commonly associated with these sort of conditions, with these sort of autoimmune conditions. And then when we have these antibodies, we have these conditions that affect various organs of the body, we may also get lung involvement, interstitial lung disease. And then the interstitial lung disease, basically, can then turn into fibrosis. So this inflammation in the tissues of the lung can lead to scarring, fibrosis. So over time, connective tissue diseases affecting the lungs as well may lead to lung fibrosis or lung scarring. And these are usually treated generally with uh, anti-inflammatory medications or we treat the underlying 
connective tissue disease, the underlying autoimmune disease, and this usually helps the lungs as well to prevent further scarring, to reduce the inflammation in the lungs. So one example of this would be if someone suffers from rheumatoid arthritis that affects the joints, the small joints in the hands causing you know, deformations of the joints, etc. If we treat the rheumatoid arthritis well, we would be treating the lungs as well if there is involvement in the lungs. There is no rule that the lungs will be affected after the joints. For example, sometimes it can be the other way around. But these conditions, it's important to understand that they affect the body as a whole because these antibodies produced by the immune system can bind to different targets in different places around the body. And they may cause very strange conditions that seem to be unrelated. So someone may be suffering with their joints. They may also be breathless. So this is one instance where you have a connective tissue disease that affects the joints, that affects the lungs. And you may be end ending up seeing different specialists for different reasons. You may go see a pulmonologist for your breathing. You may end up seeing a rheumatologist for your joints. And then it's a matter of really tying it all together into a diagnosis that makes sense and explains everything. So this is the interesting part of these conditions, but it can lead to delays in diagnosis, as you can imagine, because putting it all together and realizing that there's actually one disease that explains everything can take a long time. So CTD, ILD, if you hear this term, it just means connective tissue disease associated interstitial lung disease. Hopefully this was helpful and you didn't find this explanation too convoluted, but I tried to take it step by step. Feel free to watch the video again. Feel free to ask me questions in the comments below and I'll try to answer in future videos and try to clarify it in a simpler way. Thank you for watching.